Well hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show we're going to be making a shaker. Now when I say we're going to be making a shaker, I don't mean like a salt shaker, I mean a musical shaker. One for percussion when playing music. And there's all kinds that you could make and there's all kinds on the market. And I just thought it would be a fun idea to make our own. So to make our own, I thought it'd be fun to do a little bit of a strange shape. But I happen to like ukuleles, so we're going to be making one in the shape of a ukulele. So the first thing we're going to start off with, because you guys know I love them, is we're going to start off with a template. I have some quarter inch thick hardboard here and what I have done is I've just searched the internet for images of ukulele outlines and I have adhered one to a piece of this quarter inch uh, hardboard so that it fits in a square that is four inches wide by five and a half inches long. Now you can make it whatever size you want. This is the size I've chosen and the reason that that measurement is important will come into play a little while later in the build. But for now we have our ukulele uh, outline attached to our MDF and we're going to be cutting it out so that we have a template to trace. And with that, our template is cut. And this will actually be the outer um, profile of our shaker. So we have a second piece of MDF cut here to the exact same dimensions, which is four by five and a half, if you remember. And what we have as well is we have a quarter inch flat washer. We need another template that will be for the inside uh, profile and it has to be smaller. We'd like to end up with a wall of this shaker being about 3 16 of an inch thick. Uh, you can make yours as thick as you want, but I'm thinking that 3 16 will give enough uh, material that it's going to be strong, but thin enough that it'll allow the sound to come out. So we're going to line up these pieces here and I'm just going to put the washer inside this template and using it as almost like a bearing, I'm going to run around the design of our ukulele shaker here. And what we end up with is another cutting template here that is 3 16 of an inch all the way around smaller than our outside one. So with this being our inside template, cut that one out on the scroll saw too. And that would be the two templates that we require to make the shaker. And what I've got here is a two inch thick piece of poplar that is, surprise, surprise, four inches wide. And that, of course, coincides with the width of our template. I'm going to explain why that's so important a little later on. But the next thing that we want to do is we want to take this over to our bandsaw, flip it up on end, and we're going to take 3 16 of an inch slice off of this side and a 3 16 inch slice out of this side. We're also going to pay attention to what side they belong to so that when we glue it all back together, our grains are going to match up. So over to the bandsaw and resaw 3 16 off of each side. So now that we have the wood re-sawn, I've marked it on the one end over here as far as where they go and which goes on which side. We're going to take them over to the thickness planer and I want to run these two outside pieces through, getting rid of these saw marks that are in it and take it down to one eighth of an inch thick. This center piece, I'm going to run it through on both sides to get rid of those saw marks and we're going to take this down to whatever it takes. It should only take a couple light passes, but we'll probably end up with a piece that's just a little less than an inch and a half thick. 
Well, I finished the planing and what we ended up with in the end was the outside pieces being one eighth of an inch thick and this center core actually ended up being one and three eighths of an inch thick. And I mean, you can do whatever you want. If you want to make it thicker, thinner, whatever you wish. I mean, that's up to you. It's, it's your shaker. I've also used my setup blocks to set the fence on my miter fence or the stop block on my miter fence and cut these pieces so that they are five inches, or sorry, five and a half inches long. So they coincide exactly with our template. Now, the other thing that I've done to make sure that everything is gonna work out just fine is I've labeled the top of our ukulele shaker. And on the bottom, I have marked lines here to coincide uh, with each corner so that I know exactly how the alignment of each piece will go back together when I actually go to glue it. So for now, we can put aside our top and our bottom pieces. Just put them off to the side there and we need to concentrate on our center core. And we will take our inside template, which is our smaller one of the two, and we will line it up with our block of wood and we're going to draw out our inside profile here. And once we get that done, we're gonna take it over to the scroll saw. I'm gonna use a number seventh uh, PGT or pre precision ground tooth blade. And I'm gonna cut this out so that we end up with this hole in the middle of our shaker. And with that, we have our core cut out. Now, something I'd like to point, in, point out is that two things, actually. You want to make sure that the top of your ukulele coincides with the T or the top mark of your stock as well. Ensure that your blade on your scroll saw is 100% square to your table. Otherwise, you're going to have problems later when it comes to dealing with the next step of this little project. So now it's time to arrange it so that we can get the filler into this. And what we're going to be using is popcorn. Well, the next step in this little project is to glue one of our panels back on to our uh, centerpiece that cut out. And we're just going to use regular wood glue and you want to give a coating to your centerpiece and make sure you get it close to the edges. It doesn't matter so much if you get it out to the outside edges because that's all going to be cut off. But we do need to get it right up to the inside edge of our ukulele pattern. And of course, there will be some squeeze out that comes into that cavity. And that's okay. We're not too concerned about that. You just want to make sure that you've got really good coverage there, a nice thin layer to get good adhesion all the way around. And once you get your glue spread there like that, just take your pieces, make sure that you're paying attention to your layout lines that you've put on here to make sure that you've got the right piece. Line up your edges and glue this in place. Now you're going to want to clamp it down eventually but while we're waiting for that, we'll flip it over, making sure that our edges are lined up. You can take some of the squeeze out of the inside if you'd like or what have you, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna put a quarter inch of popcorn into the, or sorry, a quarter cup of popcorn into the middle here. Now, don't use pop popcorn, guys. It's soft and mushy. It's not gonna make any noise at all other than yeah, exactly. It's not going to make any noise. So take a quarter cup of unpopped popcorn and place it in this cavity here. There we have a quarter cup of unpopped popcorn. Dump it in there. And once you get that dumped in, now we're going to place glue around this edge here of this profile inside. And we're going to take our other piece, paying attention to our markings, and lay it on top. Clamp the whole thing up after that and let it dry.
And there we have it all clamped up and lined up and ready to go. So we're going to let it sit and dry. And when we get back, we're going to move on to the next step, which will be marking out the outer profile to cut at the scroll saw. Just one more thing to point out. If you're having problems getting these edges aligned because pieces are sliding, there's absolutely nothing wrong with, in the waist areas, driving a little finishing nail in there to help you hold things in place until the glue dries. You don't have to drive them home. Just tap them in enough to hold things in place and then remove them before the final step. Well, now that the glue is dry, you want to pay attention to your markings that you put here to mark the top of your ukulele shaker and use your outside template and line it up with the edges of your block and trace out your design to cut. And this is where the importance of the size of the template comes in play, because now you know that as long as you're lined up with the edges and you've marked with your inside template, you would not risk cutting into your design and into your area where your popcorn is for your shaker. So mark it out. Cut it on the scroll saw, check your blade again for square. I would suggest using a nice new sharp blade to do this so you don't have any deflection and cause yourself some problems. And with the shaker cut out, we've actually cut just outside the lines. So we're going to take this over to the oscillating drum sander and we're just going to clean it up all the way around. Once we're done with that, I'm going to use a 1 8 inch round over and take off this sharp edge all the way around here on both sides. And there you have it. A ukulele shaped shaker. Now guys, this is a really cool project. It, it really turned out well. I'm quite pleased with it. It feels good in your hand. You can hold it at the small end of the body or the large end. And depending on which way you shake it, it gives different sounds. So you can play with it to adjust it according to what type of music you like. If you like a softer shaker, you can shake it this way. If you like something more harsh, It's actually quite versatile. I'm actually surprised at how many different sounds I've been able to get out of this thing. Now guys, it doesn't have to be a ukulele shape. It could be whatever shape you like. It could be round, it could be square, it could be rectangle, triangle, whatever you prefer. If you want to make it in the shape of a frog, make, but make it in the shape of a frog. But at least you know that the process that I've shown you here for making them is exactly the same across the board, whether you want to make it uh, a frog or whether you want to make it in a ukulele shape. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this show this week because I've had a lot of fun bringing it to you. And I hope that you're going to join me again next week for yet another woodworking video.